Whoa, careful! Care that was the moment I knew that my plan had failed. Let me tell you how I got here, and why it wasn't unexpected. I wanted to build a trailer hitch bike rack to make it easier to take my boys out mountain biking. Right now when we want to go, we have to pull out the trailer and strap all the bikes down. I like the platform style racks and thought it wouldn't be too hard to build. I thought I would try making two sizes, one for a single bike and one that could hold four bikes, but I ended up just working with the larger size. I had some metal tubing I had salvaged from a sign that had been hit by a car. The tubing fit perfectly into the trailer hitch receiver. I just had to remove the strips of metal that had been welded on to attach the sign. We're having one of our rare thunder and rainstorms here in Arizona. I wasn't sure what the best way to mark and drill the hole for the receiver pin was, so I copied it from a hitch I already had. Then I eyeballed the center of that hole and drilled it out. I figured I could adjust the hole on one side of the tube if it didn't line up correctly and it wouldn't be too much of an impact. This would have been a nice shot if WD-40 was a sponsor. I love using stepper drill bits. I've realized that I don't need a pilot hole to use them, though if I had, I could have drilled all the way through the tube to make sure my holes were aligned. After deburring the hole, I tested the pin to see how it fit. One side still had a little bit of a burr on the inside that I knocked down with the pin. I was pleasantly surprised that it went in so well on the first try. I wanted to test this in the receiver before doing anything else because it would be a lot easier to address any issues now. It was also an opportunity to make sure the tube would be strong enough. I wasn't really concerned, but it wasn't nearly as thick as a tow hitch. I was able to balance on it and it didn't even flex. Now onto the main part of this test build. I had been trying to think of different materials I could use for the trough that would hold the bikes. Angle iron or C-channel would have been ideal, but they were also more than I wanted to spend for the quantity I would need. I found these steel studs that were light and cheap and thought I'd give them a shot. If it worked, one stud would be enough for two bikes. If it failed, then I wasn't out too much money. The opening of the stud was a little too tight for the tire to fit, so I wanted to fold down the edge. I was also hoping that the folded edge would help stiffen and strengthen the stud. After trying a few different approaches, I settled on tapping the edge over with a hammer and flattening it against the workbench. I found a block of wood that fit nicely inside to help stiffen the area while I worked. This ended up taking much longer than I had expected. For the sake of making progress on my test, it would have been quicker to just fold down the areas where the bike would sit.
Once the flanges were folded down on each side, I went back over it with pliers to even out the edge. This ended up not being worth the effort. Now the tire fits cleanly inside the stud. I wanted to test the fit and strength of the stud prior to mounting it to the hitch tube, so I used a block of wood inside the channel to clamp it onto the hitch tube. With the bike up on the rack, I realized that I needed something to hold the bike down and keep it vertical. I grabbed a ratchet strap to use as a temporary hold down. Even with the strap, there was a lot of motion on the rack, and I still wasn't sure it would work. Oh, careful! Care I switched camera angles for a better view when it happened. The gentle shaking from my son caused the bike to fall over and bend the stud. It was clear that this approach wouldn't handle hanging on the back of the car down the road. Good thing we got that one. Ironically, on the morning that I was planning to build this, my kids found a bike rack at a yard sale down the street that would meet our needs. They ended up convincing me to buy it, but I still wanted to build my design. I went into this build knowing that it might not work. That was kind of the point. I wanted to see if I could build a trailer hitch bike rack for less money than it would cost to buy one. I wanted to use materials I had on hand and spend as little money as possible. So this was kind of a test to see would this idea of a steel stud work, which it didn't. So my first approach was a failure, but I can iterate from here. That's a lesson I learned from working in the aerospace industry. Fail fast, fail early. Or in other words, Spend as little time and effort as possible to get your idea to a point where you can test it to see if it's going to work. If it fails, then you just iterate and update your design. It might seem like a waste of effort, but in the long run, it's a lot less expensive to have a failure early on and to be able to make change than it is to have a failure at the very end and try and scramble to get a bad idea to work. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. 